a fast that must a fast that must end. That's the blunt assessment of Labor's leadership travails from party elder Simon Crean. His intervention is one of several over the last 24 hours that's blown away the public facade of a united party. In truth, Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd has been stalking Julia Gillard for months. Simon Crean wants the Prime Minister to demand the Foreign Minister's loyalty or that he quit the front bench. Kevin Rudd's in Mexico and not scheduled to return until the weekend. He says a challenge is not on, but as political editor Heather Hewitt reports, a showdown is looming. What's going on? We want a government that is steady, professional and strong. I reckon they deserve what they get because she burnt Kevin Rudd yep. and I reckon he should burn her too. I'm just starting to think now that neither of the two candidates in this big battle can win office. The phony war is over. The Labor leadership tensions have now boiled over for all to see. The and the punters are weighing yeah, in as the Prime Minister sticks to a gun. Are you seriously attempting to tell us that you think Kevin Rudd has not been disloyal to you? Uh, look, what I'm here, Paul, telling you is I'm getting on with the job with the strong support of my caucus colleagues. Kevin Rudd is overseas getting on with his job too as Minister for Foreign Affairs. Yes. Australians are tired of it. The party's tired of it. It's destroying the Labor Party's chances in Queensland. I mean, frankly, enough is enough. For heaven's sake, the darn thing's gone on for nearly two years. Let's just fix it. It looks as though it might be coming to a head. Uh, hopefully it will come to a head in one shape or other. And uh, uh, so that we can get on with, with the Parliament. So where do you go to? Do you call a spill next Monday when you're all back in the national capital? I wouldn't. If he thinks he's got the numbers, let him challenge. But, if but he, he hasn't and he won't. It's ugly and divisive as the pro-Gillard forces versus pro-Rudd slug it out. The foreign minister flew off to Mexico yesterday, leaving the havoc in his party behind him after a weekend of public recriminations from both sides, including the anonymous release of this clip shot when Kevin Rudd was prime minister. This f***ing language, it just complicates it so much. You learn from your mistakes, and I've made mistakes in the past. As, as to whether, you know, Kay Rudd has changed in uh, any fundamental way, that's a judgement for others to make. For all the time that he's been trying to say that he's different, a different Kevin, a new Kevin, all he does is reinforce the old Kevin. It's a deliberate reminder to all caucus members of why they ousted Rudd in the first place, as both sides gauge numbers, but no one makes a move. I don't think um, this thing is going to go much longer. I think it'll come to a head either by way of the Prime Minister saying, look, we've got to settle this because it's getting in the way of good government, as lots of ministers keep saying, or Kevin Rudd comes back and says, uh, this is getting in the way of good government, let's have a uh, showdown. So, who pulls it on and when? It's now got to the point where there's no going back and caucus support is being assessed. The Gillard camp confidently puts Rudd numbers in the low 30s out of 103 votes. The Rudd camp claims it's much higher and there are undecideds. What is clear is that the Foreign Minister does not have support to win a ballot and Julia Gillard has no intention of pulling one on just yet despite this advice coming from some quarters. In my view, she should, and the reason for that's very simple. The only way this issue will be resolved between Kevin Rudd and the Prime Minister is if there is a ballot. Now, I know that there are some people who argue that this matter can be dealt with in other ways. I don't agree. The reality is, if there's a ballot, that's the Australian way. People understand the outcome of, of a ballot, and they understand that there's a winner and a loser, and that the loser should move on. But for now, the prevailing view amongst Julia Gillard's closest supporters and strategists is to take a different tack, based in part on this comment from Tasmanian independent Andrew Wilkie on Sky TV yesterday, which they see as evidence of Kevin Rudd's disloyalty. Uh, in last November, I had a long meeting uh, with Kevin Rudd in his office in Canberra, uh, at which we talked about um, a range of things, uh, including the possibility of him coming back uh, to the Prime Ministership did he seek your support? Um, it, it, was, uh, it was left unsaid. I think that what's got to happen is the Prime Minister's got to have the discussion with him. After all, he's Foreign Minister because of a discussion they had during the last election campaign. You might remember it, a very frosty one on TV. 
clearly he's not playing as part of the team. And I think that conversation should happen. If he can't be part of the team, he should exit the team should or she, challenge. Should she sack him? That's a question of judgment for her based on that conversation. But what would but you if do? In fact, if, in fact, the results over the weekend, this conversation he was having last November with Mr Wilkie are any guide, and he denies it, but if that's any guide, he's clearly been disloyal internally. Now, well, I know that he has been talking to other people. Do you have the evidence? Do you need the evidence? I think you need a conversation and it needs to be a frank one and it needs to be an assertion of leadership by the Prime Minister. In other words, haul Kevin Rudd in on his return from overseas. If he's unable to issue satisfactory denials, seek his resignation. And if that's not forthcoming, sack him. Julia Gillard's advocates are still debating the next step after that. See whether Rudd makes a move or Julia Gillard calls for a ballot. In this ongoing game of cat and mouse, Kevin Rudd has made these comments from afar. I um, think um, Simon Crean is a very good minister uh, of um, the government. Uh, I'm disappointed by his remarks uh, because they are based on an untruth. If there is a leadership spill, will you throw your hat in the ring? Well, can I say that the, that is uh, not in prospect because we have a Prime Minister and I am the Foreign Minister. As well, he's issued a statement confirming a meeting with Andrew Wilkie last November on the Iraq war. He said Mr Wilkie raised leadership late in the conversation, but at no point did he, Kevin Rudd, indicate he was seeking the leadership. As for Andrew Wilkie's latest version of events... As we spoke in generalities. Um, at no stage did Kevin Rudd specifically uh, request my support in the event that there would be a change of prime ministership. Um, and nor did he, uh, at any stage, criticise Julia Gillard. Um, and I felt a need to just, just make sure everyone understands that today. When did you last have a conversation with Kevin Rudd about these matters? Oh, look, uh, I have conversations with Kevin Rudd frequently in his capacity as Minister for Foreign Affairs, oh, yes. She now looks set to have one very big conversation with him on leadership. Through all of these machinations, the independents, who helped Julia Gillard form a minority Labor government, look on, at least one of them unimpressed. Kevin Rudd wasn't a contender when that arrangement was made, so obviously if there is a change of leadership, uh, all bets, in my view, uh, would be off and a whole range of options uh, suddenly unfold. Who knows what's going to unfold over the next week, but something will have to give. Political editor Heather Hewitt.